Let's take a look at the div hunt interface. So a lot of things are quite similar to how they are in Webflow, but not everything is. So I'm just going to walk through all of the most important stuff that you need to know when you are working with div hunt. So first things first at the top over here, we have our files, our styles, all sorts of elements which we can add in. And as you can see, when I hover over something, there are other options within that that come up. So for example, different types of headings, different types of paragraphs, different form elements, so on and so forth. Over here, we have undo and redo. This allows us to switch our breakpoint and of course, change our styles from there in the styles panel, which we'll get into. Over here, we have our zoom and we can also just of course, zoom out with our mouse. Besides that, we have a language switcher, which will show whichever languages you have set up. We also have a settings panel right here, which will allow you to, right within the builder, edit any of your important site settings. This is of course the publish button, so don't click that until you are ready to go. Then moving down on the left side, we have pages. So this of course allows us to instantly switch between pages. It also allows us to select which pages we want pinned and which ones we do not. Then beside that, we have components. So any components that we create are gonna be right here. And when we hover over them, we will get a preview of how they look. Then we have the one that you're probably gonna be using more than anything, which is the layers panel. So over here, if I click this, as you can see, it will take me to this item within the layers panel. And I can see everything about my site, how it's organized, rename layers, do whatever it is that I want to do in there. Then once you've actually clicked something, over here, we have the styles panel, which is where most of the work is going to get done. So all of our settings are over here. Of course, that's explained in another part of the video. We have our custom CSS targets, all of that right here. Then we also have settings. So any element with any settings to them, for example, an image, we can change stuff right over here, the image source, some of the settings, aspect ratio, alt alt name, so on and so forth. So then we also have advanced and there's a lot to talk about for this, which will be done in another video, but there's conditional visibility. You could pull certain variables, sources, so on and so forth. What you're looking at when building a website in Div Hunt versus in Webflow is quite different. So upon first glance here, everything looks normal, very similar to how it looks in Webflow. That being said, we go back to Div Hunt over here and zoom out. We can go ahead, take a look at all of our pages. You can pin pages to the canvas, unpin pages, zoom in, zoom out. Whereas in Webflow, you are stuck to looking at it in this static view. Classes work quite differently in Webflow versus in Div Hunt. So first, here we are in Webflow. And as you can see, this here has the class heading jumbo small applied to it. And Let's just say, for example, I want to make a red version of that. I can go ahead, add a combo class, go to the color over here, select red, and it is red. But let's say, for example, I want to then make this button red. If I go ahead and type red, just like I did before, as you can see, it's not going to do anything because this is all about combo classes. So then I'm gonna to need to add that red class again, I'm gonna to need to go to the color and I'm gonna to need to set it to red manually. And the only thing you can do in Webflow is create your own classes and use global classes. For example, all images, all heading ones, all heading twos, so on and so forth. Now let's move over to Div Hunt and see how that looks. So in Div Hunt, combo classes do not exist. There are three things. There are global classes, classes, and tags. So first of all, global classes work exactly as you would expect them to. You can select all H1s, for example, and set this to, let's say, 75, and that is going to make this 75 pixels. Then we also have classes. So let's say I want to, for example, set this here to red, just like we did in Webflow. Let's go ahead and do that. Save it, and it's red. Nothing different. However, now if I go ahead and go to a completely different element and set this to red, what we're gonna see is that it is actually going to inherit that red class because these classes are not stuck to the type of item that they are, the other classes that are applied. They're simply style rules that we can apply to any element at all. And finally, one thing that we have in Div Hunt that we do not have in Webflow is tags. So let's say I wanted this paragraph to be 
have a little bit more spacing below it. Let's actually first go ahead and see how that would look in Webflow. What we would have to do over here is create some sort of combo class, let's say more spacing, for example, and then we can create that, which is okay, especially if you very frequently are going to need to do that. However, it does get a little bit messy when in your styles panel, you have a whole bunch of different classes that maybe you're only using once or twice. You don't need to do that in Div Hunt because we have tags. So if I select tag over here and then set this, for example, to 100 pixels, it is only going to affect this element. I do not need to worry about it popping up again when I don't want it to, about getting busy and having to give ridiculous class names to things because what I apply to the tag is only going to affect that element. Let's talk about adding additional features to your site. So here we are in Webflow. And if we go over here to this add bar, there is a bunch of stuff. So for example, YouTube, body animation, so on and so forth. And with that, the thing about them is that they are loading on all sites, even if you do not use them, which is okay, I guess. Nothing particularly wrong with it. That being said, if we want to add more functionality to this, then there is no way to do it natively within Webflow. We will need to look at some custom code, third-party solutions, and that's fine. We can integrate those, but they are not built into the platform. Now let's go ahead and take a look at Div Hunt. So here we are. I can go over here to settings and go to plugins. And as we can see, there's a bunch of stuff here and this library is continuing to grow. None of these will load on your site unless you install them. So let's go ahead and add the YouTube embed, for example, just like that. And then once we go back to the builder, once that loads, we will be able to go ahead and add a YouTube video. Let's do that. Let's just create a div. select it, go to settings, go to transform, and do YouTube embed just like that. And as we can see, it loads. We've got a whole bunch of controls. We can make our own thumbnail. We can do all sorts of different things, play it in the pop-up. Anyways, there's a lot of different plugins and you can activate them on your site as you wish. Swatches in Div Hunt and in Webflow overall function basically the same way. That being said, it's a little bit different to actually create them. So first, in Webflow, you create a swatch by clicking over here in your colors, clicking to add swatch, selecting it, naming it, and saving it. Then you can reuse it right over here anywhere you want, which that is the same as in Div Hunt. But setting up the swatch itself is just a little bit different. So what you would do in Div Hunt is go to your Styles tab right over here, and then go to colors, then you can click to create a color, name it whatever you want, let's call it brand for example, let's confirm that, and then we can change this to whatever it is that we want, and then we can use that anywhere. So if we want to go and change the background color of this, for example, we have brand right here, that's it. Div Hunt is made to be convenient for developers, so unlike in Webflow where your only options for embedding code are on-page embeds, and adding it to the header and the footer while Div Hunt also has that we also have code files so if i go right over here and click files then as we can see we have our files organized i can create folders i can create new files i can use them however i want but my project is going to be a lot more organized and a lot more open to my own code than it would be in some other tools. Let's talk about changing the style of state. So first, here we are in Webflow, and let's say, for example, we want to change the way this heading here looks when we hover over this section. Well, if we want to do that, we cannot do that through CSS. We would need to build an animation because in Webflow, the only control that you have over these states is that individual element hover pressed focused keyboard and some change depending on the element like inputs for example now let's take a look at div hunt so let's say i want to make this header here red when i'm hovering over this testimonial wrapper what i can do is i can actually click that testimonial wrapper i can go and select hover and then select the children heading to and obviously I could do this with absolutely anything. This is just one example. And let's just say I wanna make this 
mm, let's go with a nice hideous bright green so you can see how that looks. Now, anytime I hover over this section here, it is going to make that a nice hideous bright green. And we have total control over anything that CSS is going to let you do. And if for any reason you don't see something, or if you just prefer to write your own code, then you can actually go ahead, click the custom code option, and then write your own CSS. And that will affect in the builder right away. So if I was to do this, for example, and save it, as you can see, that did set it to eight pixels. Let's talk about working with custom CSS. So while both Webflow and Diffhunt are no-code tools and you can handle most of the power of CSS without actually having to write any code, sometimes you may need to write or add some custom CSS. And maybe you just prefer to instead of working with the styles panel. So no matter why you are looking to add custom CSS, let's take a look at both options. So first, here we are in Webflow. And let's just say, for example, we wanted to make this heading here just a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna need to do in Webflow is add a custom code embed. We're gonna have to write the code for it. So I will do that. And that class I have to look is called heading jumbo. go and we have to place this within style tags of course and then let's just set this to font size let's say 20 pixels important just to be sure that it is going to override the previously set classes so there we go we have that it's fine it worked but it's a little bit it's a little much to get to that point so now let's go ahead and do the same thing in div hunt. So let's just say we wanted this right here to be smaller. Well, we'd select it. We'd go over here to custom CSS, as you can see self, which means this, this element that I have selected. And let's now do font size 20 pixels and let's save it. So it updated as you can see. And not only that, if we go back to our styles panel, as we can see over here, this is set to 20 pixels. The custom CSS is totally synced up to your styles panel. Whereas if I click this in Webflow and take a look, it still says it's set to 64, which is obviously not the case. So working with custom CSS in Div Hunt is a breeze. In Webflow, you need to create folders to add anything other than the basic slug to any of your pages. We let you create completely custom routes on any page you want. So let's take this about us page, for example, and let's say for some strange reason, I wanted to change the route of this to slash D slash G slash T slash R slash E slash about us. Whatever it is that you want to do, as you can see, I've done that. And if I click it to open it, it works perfectly. Changing images in Div Hunt is slightly different than changing images in Webflow. So let's say I wanted to go and change this one right over here. I cannot double click that to change it with a little thing popping up. What I'm going to have to do is click it, then go over here to the settings panel, which I already have open and the image is right here. So if I go ahead and click that, then I can choose any image that I have. So I would just have to click to upload. I can get one from my computer or I can add a file name and a link to somewhere else on the internet. One thing that's similar about Webflow and Div Hunt is that we have our HTML structure on the left side over here, as you can see in Div Hunt and as you can see in Webflow, but they're not the same. And the reason for that is what you're seeing over here in Webflow, these are the class names, whereas this, these are simply the layer names. So if I go over here and affect this, let's just say I wanted to call it instead header one, then I would get the achieved effect of renaming it in my navigator over here, but that will also unbind it from all of these styles. In Div Hunt, on the other hand, our classes are controlled over here, whereas this is simply our layer name. So let's just say we wanted to call this something like 
big header because it is better for our organization and it makes more sense to us. Then we can do that and as you can see, absolutely nothing changes. These are simply layer names for your own organization and classes are detached from that. As you're developing, one of the main things that you're gonna need to do is publish and check out your site in a live environment. So let's take a look at the difference between doing that in Div Hunt versus doing that in Webflow. So let's go ahead and just change our content here to say, hello there. And let's do the same thing in Webflow. Now, in Webflow, what we're going to need to do is go ahead and click Publish, and then wait for it to publish. There we go. Now that it's published, we can go over here, and we can refresh, and it is going to be live. Now let's check it out in Div Hunt. So, we've changed this text, we haven't done anything else. Now, if I go over here to the live site and refresh, as you can see, it updated. But it is only updating for me because I have the builder open in another tab. This is not going to show to other people. They are going to see the state of the website when it was last published. If you're trying to find some option in Div Hunt, chances are you're going to find it by right clicking. So, for example, let's say we take one of our items over here and right click it. We have copy, duplicate, move to, clear, remove, label, loop, all sorts of things. Let's say we right click on the canvas, we can fit all of our pages to the screen, we can reset the view, we could do anything we want. Over here in the styles panel, if I right click something that has been set, so let's say set the weight for example, and right click it, we can see that right there I can reset. So all sorts of things in Div Hunt are based on right clicking. So if you're trying to manipulate anything, give it a right click and see what it says. While both Webflow and Div Hunt build websites, they do build websites quite differently. And what I mean by that is, Webflow builds standard websites, whereas Div Hunt builds what is known as single page applications. So before I get into the boring stuff, I'm going to show you how that actually looks. So here we are on a Webflow site, and let's just go to some other pages. As we can see, there is some refresh time when I click, and it is loading all of the new content on that page. Now let's go to a site that's built in Div Hunt. When I click something, as you can see, it is changing immediately. There is no delay whatsoever. However, up here in the URL bar, it is going to new pages. So a single page application, long story short, what it does is it gets all of the content immediately when the website first loads, and then it only replaces content on the page as needed. So this nav bar, for example, as you can see, is the exact same on all of the pages. So why would we want to go ahead and grab that from the server every single time the page changes. Like in Webflow, for example, this navbar is being reloaded across every single page, whereas in Div Hunt, only, for example, this section, which is a new section on this page, is going to be grabbed. So what that leads to is not only a much better user experience, but also your speed scores are going to be higher than you have ever seen them before, and people are just going to love your site.